Hi everyone, I'm very glad and honored to be our instructor today. So welcome everyone to our tutorial data visualization using the ggplot2 and its extensions. Uh, we are very proud and honored because it's our first participation in USR 2021 Global Conference. And we are very excited to be here and meet all of you. Let me present myself. I'm uh, Haifa Ben Masoud. I'm a data scientist and an engineer in statistics and data analysis. I have with me also Amir Suisi, who is consultant data science, and Kathar Dries, who is consultant data science engineer and ML uh, researcher. Our colleague Mona Belaid is uh, absent today. Uh, you can find us at Our Ladies Tunis in Twitter and uh, in GitHub. And also you can email us at tunis at ourladies.com. Also, you can reach us via Slack uh, in the channel of this tutorial. Uh, one of my colleagues will uh, share the channel uh, with you. Uh, the outline are, uh, we are going to, uh, to, to present uh, the people analytics data package in which uh, we, uh, we will uh, use uh, the data. So all our data used in this tutorial is uh, coming from uh, people analytics data package. Also, we will go through one variable visualization, uh, doing some box plot visualization, bar plots, density histogram. Then uh, uh, we will do some two variable visualization and visualize two categorical variables, two numeric variables, and one categorical, one numeric variable. Uh, second, uh, we will uh, do some correlation metrics. And finally, uh, we will close with the graphic, uh, graphic appearance enhancement. Uh, and uh, we will show you how to add an animation to your graph and make your graph look professional by, by adding maybe some logo. And also uh, we will shoot, we will see together how uh, to combine one or two uh, graphs, to, uh, two or three uh, graphs together. Uh, how to follow this workshop? Uh, actually, the GitHub uh, link was sent to every uh, to every one of you. You can uh, find all the code that we will be using uh, during this tutorial in uh, in the GitHub link. Uh, also, we need you to have some pre uh, prerequisites like uh, having a basic proficiency in R and also some ba basic knowledge about different R data types and structure. You have also to, the possibility to communicate with, uh, with, uh, with us in the chat room. So you can put all, our, all your question uh, during uh, the training session in the chat room and one of my colleagues will take care of it. And maybe at the end uh, of, this, of this tutorial, I will uh, answer uh, the, the, remind, uh, the remaining question by us. Also, uh, you can uh, get in touch with us in the Slack, uh, in our uh, channel, uh, and uh, we can still uh, uh, get, uh, we can still uh, add your question uh, there, and uh, we will also answer it. The learning goals of this tutorial are getting uh, a clear understanding of the ggplot uh, R package and getting more familiar with uh, some of its extension like ggstats, plot, gganimate, and patchwork. And also we aim to, uh, to um, let you design effective data visualization uh, by choosing uh, the appropriate type of graph uh, when uh, selecting your data. Also, uh, we will teach you how to make some visualization enhancement to your graph by uh, adding some animation or adding a logo to make the graph look more professional. Uh, 
so now, what's the grammar of graphics? We will start by a definition uh, given by Google, which is uh, the whole system and structure of a language or language in general, usually taken as consistent of syntax and morphology, including inflection and sometimes also phonology and semantics. This is a very global uh, uh, definition of grammar of graphics. Uh, also, uh, we have another definition of grammar. That is, uh, the grammar uh, is the fundamental principle or rules of an art or science. Now, apply to visualization, grammar of graphics is the grammar used to describe and create a wide range of statistical graphics. And ggplot2 uh, is an abbreviation of grammar of graphics flow, and it's created by Heidi Whiteman. Also, you can find an interesting book in the net, uh, which is ggplot2 elegant graphics for data analysis. And this is a great book for beginner, and it will show you how to use ggplot2 to create graphics and help you to understand more your data. So you can use this book as a resource after uh, this training. Now let's move to the components of graphics using ggplot2. So we have about six main um, components that should be uh, known in, uh, GG, in ggplot2 and before starting creating uh, the graphics. The main one is the data. The data is what we want to visualize and it should be in a data frame format. So we can use in uh, you can use it in ggplot2. Also, we have the coordinator system, the core, and it describes how data coordinates are mapped in the plane of the graphics. And we have also the geoms. The geoms are the geometric objects that are drawn to present to represent the data. Uh, geoms are like uh, points, lines, areas polygons, etc. And also we have the eye sticks. So eye sticks are uh, the properties of geoms, uh, such as X and Y uh, position, uh, the colors, the shapes, the transparency, etc. We also have the scales. Uh, the scales are uh, mapping uh, the values in data space, in the eye stick space, uh, like for example, color, size or shape. And also we have the uh, statistical transformation, which summarize the data in many useful ways. Uh, as example, we, we have uh, buying and counting to create an histogram and regression line for regression analysis. Uh, the prior installation are, uh, you have to install some packages uh, in order uh, to start this uh, tutorial. Uh, people analytics data for uh, the data. ggplot2, uh, summary tools to describe our data. Uh, the applier uh, to, um, to make some data manipulation. ggprism uh, to change uh, the team. Uh, GG Alley is used uh, to create the correlation matrix. Magic uh, to add some uh, logo in the graphs. Patchwork uh, is used to combine two or three or many graphs. GG Stats Plot, uh, which adds statistical details to the graphs. And GG Animate, uh, which adds animation to, your, to the graphs. Now let's uh, get an overview of the people analytics data air package. Uh, the data set used uh, in this tutorial is, because, is coming from this uh, very amazing people analytics data uh, package. Uh, it contains 11 data sets from the book handbook uh, regression modeling in people analytics uh, by Kate uh, Mantley. Uh, it's, um, and by the way, I want uh, to greet Keith. Uh, he was one of um, our uh, guests. 
and uh, to have the data of people analytics data uh, you start by uh, calling the package using using library people analytics data and then uh, the command line data package equal to people analytics data will show you all the data sets in this package we have charity donation data employee survey data job retention pol politics survey we have many topics and for this tutorial uh, I will use sociological data. So now uh, let's uh, let's see uh, and uh, get a little summary about your data. Uh, we are using data table, sociolog sociological data uh, to uh, to see uh, the number of our variable and to get uh, to get an idea about uh, the variables, uh, their type, etc. And here uh, we have nine, nine to ten variables, uh, which are annual income PPP, average working hours, education month, region, uh, job, sorry, job types, uh, gender, family size, uh, work uh, duration, and other uh, variables. Let's move to the data frame summary. So before starting uh, visualizing your, uh, our data, uh, we will do a, a little summary uh, to know about some basic uh, statistics related to our data. So for example, for the variable annual income, uh, we, uh, we have the mean, uh, the mean and max and the median, and also the frequency of valid data. Uh, here we have about uh, 361 distinct value. Also, uh, we are uh, plotting the missing value. So here we have about 10 missing value, which represents uh, 0 0.4% uh, of, uh, of the data. And this summer, uh, summary tool is generated by summary tools. It's also an R package. Uh, we can find and download to get uh, this beautiful uh, summary. Let's start now uh, with graphic types. And uh, the first one is the box plot. Uh, what is a box, uh, box plot? A box plot is a graph that aims to study a distribution. Uh, it can also show the distribution within uh, multiple groups using some statistical measures like the median, range, and outlier. Uh, the dark line inside the box represents the median. Uh, the top of box is uh, 75 percentile, and the bottom is the 25 percent percentile. We have also the end points of the line. Also, we can uh, call them uh, whiskers. It's a distance of 1.5 uh, enter a, quart a quartier range. And this is the distance between the 25th and 75th percentiles. The points uh, outside the whiskers are marked as dots and are normally considered as extreme points. In GG plot, you use a GM box plot to visualize a box plot. GM box plot requires some, um, some uh, parameter like the data. You have to specify the data. Also, you have to specify our ISIS X and Y. And we can also change the appearance of the boxes with color, fill, alpha argument. Now, uh, let's create the box plot. Here I have uh, my command line, ggplot data equals sociological data. Every time when we want to visualize something in ggplot2, you have to put this line, which is ggplot data sociological data 
and indicates to ggplot that we are uh, the data you will use in uh, our uh, visualization. Then, ISIS. Here, uh, my X will be the gender and my Y will be the annual income PPP. And I add the geom box plot to have my two box plot. Here, I want to have uh, significant names for F and M because F and M are not very significant. So I add scale X discrete with labels equal uh, C, F for female and M for male. Uh, add to that, I want to change the color. So I will have, uh, I want to have uh, a purple for female and uh, blue for male. And I use uh, this common scale fill manual. I put the name as gender to display uh, here the legend. And I give the, the labels female and male, and I set the value of the color because here I'm using the scale fail manual. Then I want to, uh, my graph to be more professional, so I want to add uh, a title. And also, I want uh, to have to change annual income PPP by, some, by something which is more significant. And also, I want to put gender in, uh, in capital letter. So I call uh, GG title and I give uh, a parameter which is label. Uh, label equal to annual income by gender. It's my title which I want to, to show in my graph. Then I have my X lab. Uh, and, the par and I give a parameter like uh, gender, lab equal to gender, and my Y lab, and I give the la label equal to annual income in US. So here's my graph. Now I want uh, to change the theme of this graph, and I add a theme B, uh, BW. And as you can notice, I changed the theme of my uh, the theme of my box plot. Now uh, you have uh, our first 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 box plot, and it looks very nice. Let's move now to uh, to an extension of ggplot to which uh, add statistical details in the two uh, ggplot. Uh, this extension is called GG Stats Plot. It's uh, an extension for creating graphics with detail from statistical tests included in the information uh, rich plot dataset. Well, in typical exploratory data analysis workflow, data visualization and statistical modeling are two different phases. In the first phase, we have the visualization for information modeling, and modeling in its term can suggest a different visualization model, and so on and so forth. The main idea of GGStats plot is to combine these two components together in one form of a graphics with statistical details, which make data exploration simpler and faster. From GGStat plot, uh, we will, we will uh, use GG between, GG between stats. It's a function that creates either a violin, a violin plot, a box plot, or a mix of two of the between groups, or between condition comparison with results from statistical tests and the subtype. Sorry, here I don't have the, the plot, so I will switch. I will switch here to show you the, uh, the plot. So, okay. So here I'm calling uh, library ggstats plot. And then I'm calling the gg between stats. 
the juge between stats is, uh, is taking about uh, four parameters, uh, which are the data. Here, uh, I initiate the data to sociolog sociological data. Then I specify my X, uh, my, uh, my X axis, which is gender. My Y uh, axis, which is annual income PPP. And the title of my graph, which is annual income by gender. And here, this is the graph. As you can, as you can see here, we have uh, the median. Also, we have some uh, other uh, statistical details. And also, we have uh, the number of female and the number of male displayed. And uh, maybe it looks nicer here. So, GG stats uh, is very easy to use and very familiar. Uh, I invite all of you uh, to check it. Uh, and uh, use uh, to check the documentation of uh, this package and uh, use it in uh, our uh, graphic. I will share uh, in the Slack channel uh, the, the official documentation of uh, stats plot, so uh, all of you can uh, can can uh, read it and uh, use it. And if you have uh, any other question related to this. Feel free to pin me uh, in Slack or reach me in Twitter or uh, via email. Okay, let's go back to our presentation. Okay, now we move to another type of graphs, which is the bar plot. Uh, a bar plot displays the relation between uh, numeric and categorical variable. This type of graph in which different amounts are being compared and shown using uh, rectangles that have different length, but the same way. We have uh, a comment in, uh, in ggplot2, which is geom bar, which enable us to create bar plots. It requires to specify the data. Also, like uh, like uh, box plot, uh, you have to provide both X and Y inside ISIS. You have also to, spe to specify the width of the bars in the bins or bin width argument. And also it, uh, to set the stat equal to ident identity to make a bar chart and creates bar instead of an histogram. Also, we can change the appearance of the bar uh, with color, fill, and alpha arguments. So, like, uh, like uh, uh, the box plot, we will start by plotting a basic, a basic bar plot. Here, uh, I have my command, ggplot. Data equal to sociological data. Uh, we have the ISIS X equal to gender and Y equal to average working hour. Then we add a Jayon bar, Jayon bar, uh, the, the main comment, uh, and we set our argument stat equal to identity and bandwidth equal to uh, 0.5. And we have your first bar plot. Now I want to add some color, uh, but first I will uh, change uh, the label of female and male, uh, of F and uh, M to uh, female and male. Here I use uh, scale X discrete, discrete because it's a uh, discrete variable. And then I will change uh, the color by skill fill manual. I have the name uh, equal to gender, the label, uh, the label is equal to female and male, and I set the colors. Then I also want to, uh, to add the title. I use uh, the GG title 
lab, uh, and I have the arguments. Labor is average working hours by gender. My X lab, labor is a gender, and labor, uh, my Y lab is average working hour. We want also to change the theme and uh, use the theme uh, BW. So we add this line of command, scale Y continuous, expand the C00 and plus theme BW and the theme is changed. If you want to rotate, to rotate uh, the, the bar plot, uh, you can use uh, the cord flip uh, command and it will be rotated like this. And now we have all, you have our first bar plot created. Let's move to the, the, to the density histogram. So a density histogram is a tool used to visualize uh, and the underlying probability distribution of the data by, uh, by drawing an appropriate continuous curve. In ggplot2, you use geom histogram command line. So a histogram corresponds to a set of field rectangles uh, whose heights correspond to the counts and the whole and whose width correspond to the width of the variable. The density plot requires other arguments like specifying, specifying the data. Uh, the X I sticks inside ISIS and uh, it's used to change appearance of the bar with color, fill, uh, and alpha arguments. We have also the giant density. Uh, the giant density is dedicated to change the appearance of the curve with uh, the size, the call, and the LTY arguments. Let's start with the, the basic density histogram. So as you can see, uh, we have a strategy here. We start by plotting the basic graph and uh, we are, do, we are uh, making some enhancement more and more. To create my uh, basic density histogram, uh, I have ggplot comment. I add the data. The data is, as usual, sociological data. Then I initiate my ISIS, x equal to education month, and y equal to density. And then I call my common line geom histogram to make the histogram. And here I have my first basic histogram. Now let's add uh, the uh, density line to this histogram to have an idea about the, the density uh, of this uh, distribu of, uh, this di distribution. And here we call the giant density. We specify the size, it's the size of uh, this line here. The color, which is black, the LTY equal to to have the shape of discontinuous points, uh, discontinuous line. Okay. Now, I want to change my labels for my X uh, and Y ices. I use uh, the X lab. The X lab command and I, and I initiate the label equal to education in months and Y label um, Y lab it's uh, here uh, with lab equal to density. Okay. Now uh, we want to have an idea about this the distribution between the gender, female and male in education month. So 
uh, you want to add some color. Okay. So in geohistogram, we add an argument, which is ISIS. And in ISIS, we specify the color, the fill, the alpha, and the position. The color will be here, gender, and the fill, it will be uh, gender also. The alpha, which is equal to uh, 0 0.4, uh, the position equal to identity. Then uh, we add gem density, and we add also uh, an argument here uh, in ISIS. Uh, it's color and color equal to gender. The difference between uh, the first histogra uh, histogram and this one is in color. So if you want to create an histogram and specify uh, the color by a factor, we have to add this argument, which is color. And we put uh, the color of, uh, we put the factor um, in which we want to change the color of uh, the histogram. Also here, we add the skill fill manual uh, and uh, the arguments are uh, some colors. Also, the, the scale color manual. So here we are using skin fill manual and skin color, scale color manual because we are uh, changing manually the color of uh, the two graphs and we are specifying that we want to have these two color, the purple and the blue. Uh, we can find the code of the color here. So for the purple, we have uh, the FF. Uh, for uh, 1493, and uh, the other is the code of the blue uh, color. Okay. Just I want to remind you if you have a question, let's put it in the chat. I will uh, take uh, I will take a look uh, in the chat by the end of the session, and if an if uh, a question remains and answer it, I will answer it. Okay. Another type of graph is the scatter plot. The scatter plot is um, a graph uh, that, uh, that aims to understand the, nat the nature of relationship between two, uh, two variables. We have uh, two comments in ggplot to create scatter plot, which are geom point and geom smooth. Geom point requires to specify, to specify the data and uh, the ISIS. Geom smooth draw a smoothing line based on losses by default, and it can be tweaked to draw the line of best by setting, met uh, by setting the method. Uh, the method LM is for uh, LM for uh, regression, uh, linear regression. So here uh, we want to, to, to plot the relationship between annual income, PPP, and education in month. So uh, here we have two variables. Uh, visual, uh, we have a two variable visualization uh, type. We will plot uh, the education month and the annual income, PPP. As usual, I call my uh, ggplot uh, with data equal to sociological data. I set my two ices, the x, uh, the x equal to annual income, PPP, and the y equal to education month. And then uh, I call my geom point and I have my graph like this. But I want to add some enhancement to this graph. And I want to have my, uh, my a different color with a different shape of point. So here in geom point, I add some arguments. The shape 
equal to 18 is to change the shape of the point. As you can notice here, here I have some round points and here I have some uh, other type of points. Also, I changed the color from, uh, from here, uh, it's a dark color to a purple color. Then as usual, I, want, I don't want to have my education month lab like this and, and annual income PPP like this. So I will call my X lab and Y lab. My X lab here, I will set, it, I will set the label as annual income in USD. And my Y lab, I will set my label as education month in month. And my graph looks better. Then I want to, to add uh, a smoothing line to my graph. And I will call JM smooth and set my methods to equal, equal to LM. It's a linear, uh, uh, linear regression between annual income in USD and education in month. And it draws here uh, the regression line. Also, I can change uh, the shape of the, the regression line by, uh, by, he, by uh, setting some arguments, like uh, line type, the color, and the fill. Uh, here, I choose my line type uh, equal to dash. Here, I have a dashed uh, line type. And the color, I want it to be dark red. Like, uh, like this, and the field, I want to fill it in blue. And this is my uh, regression line in new form. Also, I want now to, uh, to have an idea about the distribution between skilled and unskilled people in my uh, scatter plot. So here in my assets, in the first assets common, I add an argument. The argument is color, and the color is equal to job type. And the job type is to dis distinguish between skilled and unskilled people. Also, uh, a new thing is appearing here is the theme. The theme uh, legend dot position equal to battle. I use uh, this command to place my uh, legend in the bottom of my graph. So here we can also uh, put the legend position in the top or in the right on the left as you as you want. It's specify in this argument legend dot position equal to the place where you want to place your uh, your legend. Okay. So uh, here we want to add uh, some uh, regression equa equa equation. So for uh, for this we have some. Mm, I would I would uh, I would say uh, more complicated uh, code. Uh, and we are calling a new uh, two new uh, packages. So uh, we are calling uh, Pimis and Deplier to enable us to have this equation here for education. And we can also have the R squared, which may measure uh, the quality of the regression. So uh, we can uh, we are calling. Uh, the so here uh, in sociological data we have some manipulation done uh, we use it using the player uh, here uh, we are creating a new uh, data data set uh, sociological data s and we are doing a filter uh, we are filtering uh, with the, the job type in scale and scale 
So maybe I will switch to, uh, to the other presentation to show you more the code. Okay. Here I can show you uh, better uh, the code. So here we are calling, as I said, GG, PMISC, and Deplier. First, we will create our data set, which is sociological data S. And uh, here, we, we have the, the sociological data, but we want to have uh, like uh, filtering. So we, we, we won't only have the skilled people. So we call filter. Filter is the command line from Deplier, which allows you to uh, filter your data. And you want to have the job type and skill. OK. And then we have our P object. So the P is the previous graph and in which we have all this code, OK? And then um, we have uh, stat poly e equal. It's uh, from JJPMIS. The formula is uh, y and x is linear regression between uh, education in month and uh, annual income in USD. And here we have our data, which is the uh, sociological data is created previously. And then we specify the color, uh, the round digit, because we want to have our R squared uh, rounded in three digits. We specify, we are specifying the ISIS here, uh, the annual income PPP, uh, and the education in months. Uh, then uh, we want to paste the label. And it's uh, like we are pasting skill, the, equal, the equation from here, from formula. Uh, we are setting uh, the parameter, uh, we want to show in italic. And also we have some uh, some enhancement here for the equation with the uh, hashes and a hashes. Then uh, the parse is equal to two. Uh, the label y and pc is equal uh, to 0, uh, 95. And the label x and pc is equal to uh, 0, 1. And uh, here we can have our uh, regression equation. Education equal to uh, 143 plus um, 0 0.00824 uh, ENC income. Okay, and the R squared is equal to 0 0.147. Uh, uh, so here, uh, this is the, the scatter plot with, uh, with uh, the enhancement. Uh, and uh, we can, every time you want to display uh, the equation of the, equation, the regression or uh, the R squared, uh, you can use uh, this, uh, this block of command uh, with stat uh, poly equa equation. Uh, you choose this formula uh, and we can create uh, our data as previously here. And uh, we can use all those arguments inside the, the stat poly equation uh, to have this, uh, to have a graph looking like this. Okay. Let's return to our uh, presentation. So if you have, uh, question uh, regarding this uh, this block of code please don't hesitate uh, to put it in the chat i will answer it if uh, something is unclear please also tell me in the chat 
I will uh, take care of this. Take care of the chat. Okay, great, Kauke. Thank you. So now uh, we want also to to have the equation, the regression equation of the unskilled people. So here we are doing the same, but now we are creating a data set for uh, unskilled, unskilled people. So we have our sociological data. We are filtering uh, with uh, the drop type in uh, unskilled. And then we are using the stat poly uh, equal uh, like um, uh, uh, comment. And as argument, we are doing the same, but this time we, we are using uh, the sociological data uh, U for unskilled people. Also, we have the ISIS, the annual income, the education month, and then we are uh, pasting the labels and choosing uh, the italic format uh, for those labels. And here we have our two equation uh, here. This is uh, like uh, a graph which contains all the information about uh, a scatter plot. Okay. And uh, we can consider this like a professional one and we can use it in uh, all our uh, articles maybe or uh, your studies. It's very important in the scatter plot to have an idea about uh, the regression uh, equation. So here, every time you want uh, to uh, display this, uh, you can copy just, as I said, copy and paste this uh, block of code and make some modification to it. Okay. Let's move to the correlation matrix. The correlation matrix is uh, a table that displays the correlation coefficient, uh, coefficient for uh, different numeric variables. And in ggplot, we have a comment called core. Core calculates the correlation between two or more variables. Uh, here, uh, we are using data table to, to, uh, to plot a correlation matrix, but it's a correlation matrix which looks like a table, not like a graph. You want this uh, to turn into a graph, so we are calling our library GG Alley, and from GG Alley, we are calling uh, GG pairs command line. In GG pairs, uh, we have uh, from now uh, only two arguments. Uh, the two arguments are the data and the columns. Okay. So uh, just uh, for your attention, if you want to plot a correlation matrix, all the variables should be numeric. You don't, uh, we can't uh, plot a correlation matrix, for example, for two categorical variable or one categorical and one numeric variable. All our variables should be numeric. So here we have numeric, uh, numeric variable, uh, which are the annual income PPP, uh, the average working hours, the education, the education in months, and uh, GG pairs displays uh, all these uh, graphs as correlation uh, matrix. So here we have uh, like uh, uh, three types of graph combined in one. Uh, this is a density plot, a density plot of uh, the annual income PPP. Uh, and annual income uh, uh, from annual income PPP, yes. And we have a scatter plot between the annual income PPP and average uh, working hour. And a scatter plot between uh, annual income and education months. 
here we have the coefficient, the coefficient of correlation and the significance of it. So here we have a significant coefficient because we are having uh, three stars. So it's uh, a negative correlation, but it's significant also. Then uh, we have also the correlation coefficient between education month and annual income, the education month and annual uh, and aver um, average working hours. Okay. Now I want to change the theme of uh, this uh, correlation matrix and I want to look nicer. So I call my, my, th my new theme, uh, which is uh, theme BW. So here the theme BW uh, change the appearance of my correlation matrix. So uh, the title are having this gray rectangle, are putting in this gray rectangle. Uh, also uh, like uh, we have, uh, we still have the distribution between the variables, the scatter plot and the co co coefficient of correlation. And it, uh, it looks nicer. Now I want uh, to do some comparison in a correlation matrix. And I want to do this uh, comparison between gender. I know, uh, sorry. Before moving to the comparison, uh, here uh, I want to, to change uh, my, the look of my uh, density line to uh, an histogram. And I want to add a regression line to my scatter plot. So here I uh, add some arguments in my GG pairs. Uh, lower, lower here, I have the lower and lower, it's uh, for my, uh, uh, my lower part here. And the upper is, uh, is here, my upper part of uh, the correlation matrix. And here my uh, my diag is here. Okay. So let me explain to you uh, the role of each argument to better understand it. Okay. Uh, to recapitulate, we have three parts in the correlation matrix, uh, which is uh, the lower part, which is this one. So this one is the lower part of a correlation matrix. The upper part, which is this part, as you can see, and the jack part, which is this one. Okay. So we will start the change from part to part. So we will start with the lower part. The lower part is composed of the scatter plots. So here in the scatter plots, I want to add a regression line to get uh, an idea about uh, the, how my, uh, the relationship is between uh, my two variables. So here, I call an argument called floor, and it's equal to the list. And in list, I have to specify some parameters. Here, for example, I add a continuous, uh, a continuous equal to wrap, uh, to wrap and uh, the wrap is equal to smooth because here I want to, to have a smooth line between uh, the two uh, variables. The methods, the method is the LM. It's for linear regression and the color is gray. And here my point will be gray. So in the previous graph, as you can see, the points are dark. And I really want to change them into gray. So here I'm putting my color as gray. So here my points are gray and my, uh, my regression line is dark. Okay, 
Now let's move to another, bar, uh, another part, which is the, dia the diagonal. So previously, I have a density line plot, and I want to change it into an histogram. So here in my diagonal, I will call my list. And in my list, I will put the arguments, uh, which are continuous. And here uh, in continuous, I put the wrap equal to bar dial. So bar dial is to specify that I want my density plot to be like an histogram, not uh, a density line. And then here in upper, which is my part here, I want just to change the color and the size. Uh, I want just to change the size of uh, of the, my corruption, uh, my cor my cor cor correlation coefficient. So here I have the little size, which is unreadable. So I want it to be more readable. So I put my arguments equal to five. Okay, and now I have my correlation matrix, which looks better than the other one. And now as an enhancement, I want to, do, to add some colors and specification to this uh, correlation matrix. So here from uh, Gigi Ali also. So I, I let, uh, I just, I keep my Gigi pairs sociological data and uh, the columns we are plotting from one to three, our three numeric uh, variables. And here in ISIS, uh, we have a new line in our code, which is usually plot ISIS color equal to gender. So if I want to specify the color, I have just to add this line of code, which is usually plot ISIS color equal to gender. And here I have my specification between the two, two gender. I have a uh, woman in pink and men in, in blue. And here also, as you notice in the co uh, correlation coefficient, we have the, coefficient, uh, the correlation coefficient of all the distribution. And also we have the, co uh, the correlation coefficient between female and male. It's a specification between the, the two gender here. Okay. So before moving, if you have uh, any question, please uh, put it in the chat. I will just... Uh, so if you have some question, please put it in the chat. If something remains not clear, please, uh, please tell us. Ah, uh, sorry, uh, Carlos, you are, you are right. It's uh, the education which is uh, correlated. Uh, so, uh, am I sharing my screen or not? Please tell me how to. Uh... Yes, it's okay, Haifa. Ah, okay. Go ahead. Okay, Go thank ahead. you. Uh, okay. Let's move to another type of graphs. And now in this part, we will take uh, care of uh, enhance, uh, doing some enhancement in the graph you, we are seeing previously. So uh, in the previous graphs, we are using uh, like uh, themes from ggplot2, 
And now we want to, uh, to change to another theme from an extension uh, of ggplot2. The extension we will use in this slide is ggprism. And ggprism is uh, an extension in which we can have uh, like uh, other themes uh, displayed in, uh, in ggplot2. So if you are uh, if you want to have uh, specific other themes or change the theme of uh, your graph, you can uh, you can use uh, ggpress. So uh, here we are plotting the individual income and uh, the average number of hours per week. And we want uh, to change uh, the appearance of, uh, of the graph. So we are uh, using the theme present from library GG present. So here we are choosing the 12th theme. The base uh, size here is 12. Uh, and uh, we can also choose between other uh, themes displayed in GG present. I will share also with you all the all the links in the Slack channel of uh, of this tutorial, so you can take a look and uh, practice more uh, about uh, doing graphs with uh, with uh, the extension of uh, Plot. So there are too many uh, other extension uh, we can cover all in uh, two hours. But we are trying our best uh, to cover um, the most important ones. And uh, you have a better idea about those extensions. So here we have Juju uh, Prism. And Juju uh, Prism changed the looks of all our. Uh, graph here for example as you can notice we have a different uh, shape uh, for uh, annual number of hours per week uh, it's um what's uh, what can i call this um it's a different uh, type uh, for example uh, like area serial area something like that you can change it in uh, and also we have multiple uh, range of color also. And the theme uh, prism uh, looks uh, nicer than uh, theme uh, BW. OK. Um, so uh, now I will move to another uh, enhancement type, which is make animation. And also, I will get back to my other uh, presentation in Markdown in order to show you the animation. So to create an animation and uh, make uh, this beautiful animation uh, like this one, it's a great uh, library from uh, Gplot2. It's my favorite one so far. It's uh, GG Animate. Uh, in GG Animate, uh, you can have uh, you can do uh, like many types of uh, of animation. Uh, here I'm choosing the transition states one. Uh, I choose the transition states because it's uh, the more suitable to my data and because uh, it's uh, the more suitable to this type of graph. So here, as you can uh, as you can see, uh, the graph is uh, moving. And uh, uh, we can have a transition from uh, family from one family size to another. And I think the graph is clear is more is uh, is more clear than the other one. So here, for example, we, as you can see, we have multiple um, colors, and we don't really we can't really um, distinguish between uh, between them. 
So uh, here I can see that I have blue, uh, purple, pink, all the all the family sizes in, in just one line. So I really can't dis distinguish between them. So I call my uh, Gigi Animate and I have this. So I can have a better idea about the distribution of the individual income, uh, income and average uh, number of hours per week uh, and the difference between uh, family size. And uh, it's very uh, easy to use. It's just uh, one, uh, one, one line code. I will explain uh, to you how to use uh, Animate. First, I will assign my plot here, my previous plot created, in an object called, it, called P. And then I will create another object. I will call it anim. And in anim, I will call my P, my previous graph, which is static. And I want it to be dynamic. So I call my previous one, P, the static one. And I add uh, plus transition states. And at, I specify how. Uh, uh, the, uh, some arguments like um, how I want to do my transition. Here I want to, to do my transition in function of the family size. I want the transition length uh, to be equal to two and the state length to be equal to one. Obviously, uh, there are any other, there are many other uh, type of transition and uh, too many other type of animation. I will also share it. Uh, I will also share all of this with you in the Slack channel of, um, of our uh, tutorial. So we can, you will have a better idea about uh, the different uh, animation you can do uh, using GG Animate. OK, and here I call my object anim. And in anim, you, as you can see, the graph is uh, is becoming dynamic, and uh, we can have the transition between the family size and have better idea about the distribution between the individual annual income and the average number of hours per week. So, if you have a question uh, regarding this graph, please don't hesitate to put it in uh, in the chat. We will take uh, also care of it, and also if you still have some uh, some other uh, question uh, i will uh, take it by the end and uh, by the end of this tutorial and also we will stay available uh, to all of uh, your question in, uh, in the slack uh, channel and also you can reach us via twitter or via linkedin or whatever you want or via email uh, I will share also all my uh, my social media in, uh, in this slack later. Okay. Okay. So if you want to add also uh, some other, uh, uh, just. Okay. So here you want uh, to add some other uh, arguments and some other parameter in the graph, like the title and the, the source. Also, you want to make we want to make uh, this title more significant and this title more significant. So here uh, we are having. Uh, some improvement in the code. And uh, here, for example, I have uh, my ggplot and data equal to sociological data. Uh, I set my assets. I want my ha to have uh, annual income PPP as X, and I want to have 
Education Month in Y. And I want to color uh, with the, the job tag. And here I want to display it as Jayon Port. Okay. And GG title, uh, I want, so sorry for uh, the orthograph here, it's education, educated. Um, uh, and I, wa I want my title to be education and income by job type because it's very important to add a title to a graph. A graph without a title means nothing. So the more you add uh, little details like that, like this, uh, like uh, the title, it's very important to have a title in the graph, uh, a significant uh, title for um, the X and the Y, the Y ISIS, also a significant um, uh, source, you have to add the source of your data in the graph. It's very important to have these small things in, in the graph to make it uh, looks more professional. Okay, so here I'm changing my XLAB to annual income in USD rather than annual income PPP, which uh, is not uh, significant. And I add in my Y label, uh, Y lab. Uh, total amount spent in education. And here also, I want to add my, the source of my data. So I have labs uh, captation, uh, caption equal to source uh, sociological uh, survey data. To, uh, to summarize, if you want to add uh, a source in your, uh, in your graph, just uh, you can use this line of code labs uh, which take as argument captation uh, caption uh, and we specify uh, the name of your source here. okay and we have the scale uh, color uh, manual because we want to change the color to this blue and this uh, this uh, i think uh, between yellow and brown color okay and we have also our team present here from GG present, and we choose the, the legend to be in, uh, in the bottom of, uh, of the graph. So here we are specifying a uh, theme, uh, legend dot position equal to bottom. Okay. So sometimes uh, in, uh, when you do, uh, when you are doing a graph, you have also to add some logo of, uh, of a company. So a logo of a company uh, can be added easily in, uh, in ggplot2 uh, using the extension magic. So magic is an extension which allows you to add a logo in, uh, in, your, in your graph. Uh, to have also, I will share with you all uh, the, the link of, uh, of the official documentation of magic. And, we, as, and uh, we can also have an idea about uh, what uh, this extension is doing. Uh, but for example, you can add a logo here. You can also add uh, something inside the graph, the top of the graph. Uh, we can also um, uh, have two graphs uh, together. Uh, we can uh, add also, uh, I don't know, a picture, uh, something like that. We can do some also uh, image processing using magic and any uh, and many other uh, interesting stuff uh, with this library magic. So uh, to use, to add the logo, uh, we are uh, first to have uh, to download the, the logo. Uh, our studio logo, we can find it in Google and uh, we can uh, download it from, uh, from Google. Uh, I will share, I think, the other presentation because I want uh, to get uh, deeper in, uh, with you in the code. Okay. 
Okay. So here to use magic, I have uh, I have uh, to use some arguments. First, you have to download the logo from uh, from uh, the website. Here I'm choosing to download it from the R Studio uh, website. Uh, we have this this command line in image read. Image read is used to read the image. So here I'm specifying uh, the path in which uh, I uh, I already uh, save my uh, my logo, my picture, uh, which is fix uh, backslash R Studio uh, logo the PNG. Uh, you can also so it's very really important to use uh, the PNG because it's um, a high quality uh, format. So if you want to add a logo with uh, a graph, I highly recommend to use uh, the PNG uh, format. Here I specify my X, so I want it to be just uh, here. And also I specify my Y, so I want to place it here because as I said, uh, in ggplot we have always the X, ISIS and the white ISIS. So here I have my uh, my old canvas in which I have my plot and uh, my source, etc. So here uh, in the previous one, as you can see, I have something like uh, blank here. So I want to fill it with the logo. So I have to specify uh, to ggplot uh, to uh, to um, to grid which uh, in which position I want to put my logo. So here I specify my X position, my Y position, how I want to do the adjustment. So here I have, I want to put it in the left, in the bottom left of my, uh, my graph, like that. And I want to have my width. My width is equal here, uh, unit uh, one and inches. And I'm calling the grid raster and the grid. So what's uh, the role of grid and grid raster here? The grid and grid raster are um, are uh, using uh, are used uh, to combine two graphs together. Uh, here I have uh, my graph done in ggplot, and I have my uh, my logo. So I will use grid and grid raster command specifying that i want uh, to uh, to combine my uh, my ggplot uh, graph here with uh, my logo here with all this specification and with all uh, these arguments so so to summarize if you want to add a little logo to your graph you have to call magic first you have to log to uh, to call magic then uh, you have uh, to use grid and grid the uh, raster, which uh, will combine uh, the graph with the logo. And you have to specify to, uh, to download uh, your logo uh, and save it. Specify the path in image read, uh, and then we have to specify the, pos the, uh, the position of our logo in uh, x position, y position, and um how you want to adjust it from left in the bottom i also can put it for example here in the right uh, top or uh, in the right bottom or in um, in the left top so as uh, i told you i choose to put the the logo uh, in uh, the bottom here because it was a blank and i want to fill it with the logo so i don't know if you have uh, a question please let me know. Okay. okay. I I can see that uh, there is lots of questions. 
So uh, I think uh, we will uh, have some time in the end of this presentation uh, to take care of, uh, of all of this uh, discussion. Okay. Okay, okay, okay. So let's back uh, to uh, to this uh, to this screen. And now uh, I will introduce you another um, another tool in uh, ggplot, another extension, uh, which is Patchwork. Uh, Patchwork is a great package. It's an easy package. Uh, that you you can use uh, to combine two or more graphs together uh, using the arithmetic operator. Uh, so we can use, uh, for example, the plus operator uh, to uh, simply combine two plots or uh, three or five. Uh, we can also have the vertical bar, uh, which will place plots next to each other. And also, we can have the backslash, which will place them on top of each other. So here, I will show you an example. Uh, here, I have, uh, I call my library patchwork. So here, as you can see, I have two graphs. Uh, it's really important uh, when uh, you want to, uh, it's very really important when you want to uh, make some graphs with the uh, patchwork uh, to assign each graph to an object. So here I'm assigning my first graph to P1 and I'm assigning my second graph to P2. So here I have my uh, P1 graph, uh, my, uh, my P1, uh, in which I put my scatter plot and my P2 in which I am putting my uh, my two uh, bar plots. And I want uh, those two graphs to be one on the top of, uh, of each other. So I'm using my, uh, my backslash here. But if you want just to add them next to each other, I can, I can uh, use my plus. And if I have, for example, uh, I want to plus this two graph, each one uh, next to each other, and uh, another one third graph, which will be here. I can use uh, P1, P2 with the, the, back, um, the, vertical, uh, the vertical bar, and uh, the P3, it will be with the backslash, and I will, uh, it will be, uh, all of them will be displayed uh, two, uh, one uh, next to each other, and uh, one in the bottom. Okay, uh, this is a very easy way to, to combine uh, graphs using uh, ggplot2 uh, and the, it's, um, it's less complicated than uh, using, uh, for example, grid or grid raster to, and uh, la layers to, uh, to combine graphs. Patchwork is very easy. And uh, I will also share with you all the, the, document, the documentation related to patchwork in uh, the Slack of, uh, of this uh, tutorial. So now I will share with you how to export uh, the graphs and uh, how uh, to use uh, ggsave. Uh, Actually, I'm using ggsave uh, to preserve the quality of my graphs. And uh, because when using ggsave, the graphs have better quality than using uh, other, uh, than, for example, copy and paste from RStudio or, or doing, for example, a capture of the graph. It's better to use ggsave to preserve the, quality, the high quality of uh, all our graphs. So here uh, I'm using ggsave. Uh, ggsave, I specify the path 
uh, here Higgs is uh, to indicate the path is the path uh, uh, you can find in your computer. You can just uh, copy paste it from uh, uh, the properties of the file in which you want to, to put your graph in. Then you specify uh, the name of your graph and the, the extension. Here uh, I have my JPEG, but in it's also the PNG format. You have to specify the width, uh, the height, uh, the units here, which are in inch, and uh, the DPY, and the limit size. And, he, and uh, you can easily uh, save your graph uh, and find it in the file, the specified file. Uh, now the presentation comes to, uh, to, uh, to its end. Uh, thank you everyone for joining. Uh, and you can also reach us in uh, Twitter, GitHub, or via email. Also you can reach us via the Slack, of, uh, the Slack channel. Uh, I will take a look now in the chat. So if you have a question for me, please put it uh, in the chat. Thank you, Haifa. Thank um, you, Koku. Uh, yes, we, we already uh, answered almost all the question in the chat, me and Amir, the co-authors of this tutorial. So uh, okay. there is an extra questions. We are here. We have uh, uh, extra time. Uh, don't yes. hesitate to ask us. We are available to answer you at any time and to reach us via social media as well. So. Uh, the floor is yours. Yes, uh, just in case um, I can't uh, see the chat. So Catherine, if there is a specific question, please share it with me. Yeah, sure, sure. OK. Uh, someone, uh, uh, one of the participants uh, asked about uh, T format. Uh, he said, or he or she said, uh, is it possible to export in T format for uh, graphs? I'm really not sure, sure, but I will, uh, I will see uh, here. Yeah, uh, this is a specific format. I think it's possible to yes. in the format for our uh, visualization in this tutorial. So uh, I think to export uh, a graph, it can be in uh, as image in PNG uh, or JPEG format or uh, in PDF. That's uh, okay. the format uh, which are displayed in uh, R. But uh, I think she can or uh, he can try it uh, with uh, GGSave. Maybe okay. in GGSave, uh, there are more format than uh, in R Studio. I great. OK, awesome. Uh, let me check other questions for you. OK. Uh, there is another question, please. Uh, for the legends labels, it's always labeled in alphabetical order, but I think it's easier to view uh, the view if we label it in skillet first, then skillet. What's the code to do that? They they asking about uh, script, uh, our script, but it's already shared in our GitHub. Yes, uh, the R script is already uh, shared in our GitHub, but uh, if you want to specify, for example, another order of uh, labels, not the, alph uh, the alphabetic one, uh, I will share with you uh, a code uh, which can uh, do this. OK, great. OK, let me check other questions. Okay, it's almost answered uh, by me and Amir. Thank you, thank you for your great effort to answer all the questions. I, I think uh, that that was a lot of questions. Mm -hmm. Yes. So thank you for uh, the great work. So um, if you have, if you still uh, have questions, please uh, 
send it to us. So we still have some time to, to chat together and uh, to answer all uh, your question. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. So also I highly, I highly recommend people to participate in challenges like Study Tuesday for graphic, uh, for, uh, you know, each uh, Tuesday we have uh, a data set uh, shared by, uh, by uh, the R uh, for data science community. And uh, we can use the data set to do some visualization. We can okay. start uh, mainly with the basic one, and uh, by the time and experience, uh, you can uh, improve your uh, visualization. So okay. it's very interesting to, to participate in those kind of challenges. Uh, also, last year uh, and this year, uh, it was the no. Uh, it's this year, uh, 2021 in April. It was uh, the. Uh, that a visa challenge, uh, ch uh, challenge, and um, in three days uh, we have to create uh, some graphs in, mm -hmm. in different topics. So it's very very important to practice uh, data visualization in order to get better. In. So I highly recommend uh, recommend for, to uh, to the participant to participate in those uh, challenge and practice more uh, their skills. So okay. this is like the beginning of um, of the stairs, but you have to climb the stairs by uh, by yourself. You have now the tools, and uh, step by step uh, you can uh, reach better. Okay, that's great. Awesome, Haifa. Thank you so much. Uh, uh, there is there are many people asking about missing values in uh, this uh, data set. Can you explain that why we choose this data set and uh, how to deal with? I mentioned in the chat that uh, as uh, a tutorial for beginners, uh, we didn't uh, apply pre-processing step data. Uh, so if you want to explain more, uh, the floor is yours. Yes. Uh, so we are choosing this data set because it's a clear one and uh, um, it's used also, this data set was used in uh, the, the regression handbook by Kate. Uh, and this uh, book is designed to, to educational purpose. So it was adapted to educate people and make examples. So here, because the, um, the tutorial is mainly for data visualization, so we choose not to deal with the uh, with, uh, missing values with the uh, data pre-processing because it will take much time and uh, it's another uh, maybe tutorial. In the next yes. tutorial to be maybe the with. next tutorial, yes. We can explore uh, how to deal with, uh, we, uh, with missing value. So in this tutor tutorial, we just omit the, the missing value you don't, you don't uh, treat them, but uh, we can do some pre-processing. For example, we can fill, uh, uh, fill with uh, the missing value in numeric variable with the median or the mean. Uh, we can also fill uh, with the uh, high frequency in, when, uh, when it's uh, like a categorical variable. Yeah. And also we can do some other, uh, many other data manipulation, just because, uh, as you said, Doctor, and you're right, it's a tutorial for beginner and uh, it's focus, uh, focused in uh, data visualization. So we don't want to uh, want you to have mm -hmm. like uh, some other distraction between data manipulation and data visualization. So we want you to uh, manipulate more the data visualization and uh, get more uh, to know and know more about ggplot2 and uh, the extensions yeah exactly awesome it's a great idea also to, uh, to think about another tutorial about imputations of missing values and how yeah. to apply it in r and uh, why not in python so uh, it's just another extension of our work and uh, we will try to do it as soon yeah. as possible yes yes maybe you can you can uh, do this as meta uh, okay, so if you have any other questions, please feel free uh, to ask us.